I want to free people to tell their own story. There's something powerful in that. I want people to learn how to own their truth, live their truth, and then share their truth, whatever that is. My name is Lauren Hope. I am a motivational speaker and blogger, and I'm from Suffolk, Virginia. So I'm a Navy brat, like a lot of folks here in Hampton Roads. So we moved up and down the East Coast when I was younger, but we settled in Virginia Beach where I grew up and uh, spent most of my time. And from there, I fell in love with telling stories. And so I took this amazing public speaking class in college. And the lady said, have you ever thought about being a television reporter? I said, absolutely not. Um, but she believed in me so much that I decided to become a journalist. And, um, and that started my journalist career. This was a gut-wrenching thing to watch today. Ten on your side was first on the... So when I knew I wanted to be a reporter, I was like, I have to work at Wavy News 10. So to come here and be on air and to be working alongside Nicole Livis and these people that I were once people I just watched on TV was incredibly surreal. But it also translated to a lot of pressure. I was a weekend and night reporter starting out. And the first summer I reported here, so many shootings um, and I just didn't pro I didn't process it well I even remember my therapist saying you know that every day that you do this you're experiencing you're experiencing trauma to some degree in the fall of 2013 this seeing the trauma the trauma the trauma I definitely felt that you know you would go to a story and you would see a kid who had been shot or a mother that had been shot, and then it's my duty to go talk to their grieving parents, and then I have to come back to the vigil and all of these things, and it was so hard on me. And then um, 2014, I, I don't know, I stopped eating. Like I would just eat like yogurt and coffee like for days, and my sleep started to get interrupted. My personal life is in disarray. I'm not eating well, I'm not sleeping. Um, I'm feeling turmoil at work. And so in May of 2014, I attempted to take my own life. It's just hard because I just remember after the attempt feeling very numb and like just dark and just not wanting to feel this numbness anymore. I went back in July of 2014 and I just couldn't, I couldn't cope. Like I would sit in front of the computer screen and like my hands would be like shaking and, and I started to have more panic attacks. And so um, a couple days after my birthday, I walked into my news director's office and I said, I'm so sorry, I can't do this anymore. And that was the end of my TV career. I am a good girl rebuilt. Just like it says in Jeremiah 31, 4, I will rebuild you and you will dance again. You are about to witness my rebuilding. So after I left Wavy, I was in an intense, really sad, scary, depressive episode for nearly two years. And in the spring of 2016, I felt really, really compelled to write about what it looked like to survive a suicide attempt and try to start over. The blog Good Girl Chronicles was supposed to be like the black Carrie Bradshaw moment. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about love, sex, and relationships from a self-proclaimed goody two-shoes perspective. And it never was supposed to be this revealing, transparent thing about living with mental illness. And so when I wrote that blog, I was like, no one's gonna care, it's whatever. And I had people opening up to me in a way that like I never would have anticipated. Strangers sharing with me about surviving their attempts. Girls in high school who never talked to me sharing with me about their struggles. So then I thought, wow, there are so many people out there who are suffering in silence and they want to have these conversations. And that's what made me want to keep writing. My parents were not as pleased with the blog. And so, yeah, I had a lot of tense exchanges with my family and to the point where they didn't want me to live with them anymore. And so um, when they put me out and then I was homeless for an entire year. Well, when I look back on my own story, it's still very surreal. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that was really your life. There was really a time where you were on television and then you were sleeping in a car. And the more that I shared my story, the more free I felt from shame of living with a mental illness, shame of being homeless, shame of, of losing my job to mental illness. And so um, I started to see what that did for me and I wanted to give that experience to other people. 
And um, so help me welcome our next speaker, Jeremiah Davis. Heard of this amazing organization called This Is My Brave that features mental health stories um, on a pu public platform. And I thought, what if we could do something like that on a smaller scale here? But not just mental health. I'm talking about recovery stories, survivor stories, heartbreak stories. There's something beautiful about speaking your truth in front of an audience and you see them nodding. And they're, they get it, they feel you. I'm getting emotional because it's a beautiful thing to see. And then when you tell that story, somebody's in the audience and they're like, I can do that too. Maybe I can go tell my story to a therapist or a loved one or something. Life is always gonna come at you through your paycheck, through your love life or something like that. And sometimes people get so beaten down by life that they don't think that they can get back up. And the biggest thing that I want people to see from me is that you can get back up.